Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 80. This episode is Jim Mello, who you will know from a Star Wars comic. He is the writer behind the series. And uh, guys, he's even more hilarious than you thought. He is uh, the best. And I somehow tricked him into coming on and just let me tell him how awesome he is for two hours. But uh, Jim is super fun to chat with. Uh, we talked about how he used to work at Disney. And he's got some really great stories and maybe a few secrets uh, about that. And then we just kind of broke down uh, every every issue of a Star Wars comic. Um, it's just me telling him how awesome it is, and he was uh, he was very gracious with his time. And uh, it was just so much fun, so much fun. If you're not sh- if you're not uh, reading a Star Wars comic yet, guys, when I tell you that it it holds up with canon material, like it's that good, uh, I really mean it. So definitely check out uh, a Star Wars comic dot com. They're incredible. Um, they're wrapping up the series, um, I believe. Let's see. We're in March now, the end of March. So we got April, May, two more months, and uh, and the series is ending. And uh, guys, gives you plenty of time to to catch up. They're so so good. Uh, follow Jim online at Obes on Twitter. And uh, yeah, without further ado, here is the interesting podcast episode number eighty with Jim Mello. Theme song time. <laughs> Pretty rad, my dude. Good. Just chilling. Drinking um, some coffee. There you go. Late night coffee's my kind of game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was going to just do like a puppet voice the entire time. Yeah. Just be like, <laughs> I was just going to be like, hey, it's me, Jim. How's it going? And just like see how long I could fucking do that. And, uh, oh, uh, if you don't, if you think I don't have a menagerie of characters just waiting, my friend, <laughs> you are mistaken. <laughs> I've got to the point where I have like two old men voices. We've got like uh, the one that's like super old and has a really hard time talking, and then the other one's just just super old and like forgetful. <laughs> you get you get pretty granular when you have to listen to your voice for a long period of time. It's that's the fair. worst. It's the worst. That's fair. Yeah. Um, my big question here is: uh, Do I need to watch my language because nope. it tends to slip out? Okay. Good. Because this... it tends to slip out. This makes things a lot fucking easier. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> oh, I've had, I've had, uh, you'd be surprised. That's the, that's what I actually love to toot my own horn for a second. That's, what, it, I, that's what I love about, uh, this type of podcasting. It's just random conversation, you know? It's mm-hmm. like the more, that's why whenever I have people on, it's like, it's not an interview. Trust me, you'll figure it out right away. It is a chat. Because I've learned with calling something an interview, People automatically are like, "Oh, okay. Let me uh, let me sit up straight, and uh, you ask your question. I'll give you an answer, and then on to the next one." And I'm like, "Oh <laughs> God, that's not that's not it at all." <laughs> right, and that's it was funny because Alex Alex called me and was like, "Yeah, dude. Like, I thought he was gonna ask me some questions, but we just started <laughs> he just started talking to me, and I was like, all right." Welcome. And Alex is, Alex is like one of those dudes too. If you like get him on a roll, which I was listening to the podcast, and you can tell like he's just like ready. He's he's ready to talk to you. If that's what you want to do, he's gonna talk to you. So. I love it. Love it. What a cool dude, man. I really. Oh, Alex is the sweetest man who's ever lived. He's such a good. He's such a good little heart. I would throw myself into traffic for him. He's a good guy. And you know what? As a, after talking to him for a while, I understand. I yeah. understand. We must protect him at all costs, Jim. We will. Good. We absolutely will. I will <laughs> fight. I will fight fucking everybody yeah. for Alex. <laughs> the the real reason I had you on was to make this blood pact to protect Alex at all costs. Oh, one hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> are we recording now? Because like I want this on tape. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, we are. Oh, I, all right. So I have this technique where uh, a lot of times there'll be like if I don't hit it off right away with somebody, um, there'll be like a lot of dead air in the beginning of like kind of feeling each other out sort of thing. So I do edit a bit in case like something doesn't land or there's like a weird sort of pause or whatever. Uh, but it's just chat, man. 
It's just oh, th- hanging this is all out. Gold. This yeah. was all gold. <laughs> yeah. From the start, this was gold. Everything yeah. here was, was audio gold. And I just want the listeners to know that, that this has been great. Yeah, already. It's been about it's been about two minutes. Yeah, so. the, this is a new record for me. So I, <laughs> <laughs> that that's another thing. A little little podcasting tip from an amateur. Uh, only have people on that you think you'll connect with because, my God, it is not fun if you don't. I can't imagine. I'm really bad at actually talking to people like yeah. uh, that, I, that I don't make like that instant connection with. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm terrible at small talk, so it's it's just a bummer. It's a, yeah. it's a skill. It's a skill you got to cultivate over time. I've, yeah. learned, I've learned a sense of humor. If somebody has a sense of humor, we'll get along. Regardless <laughs> of the walk of life, where you came from or anything, that's a perfect like median. If, the, if that common denominator is there, we're set. It's just how it is. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. No, I'm with you 100%. I'm into it. I'm into it. So are you Are you also in Orlando? Yeah. Are you yeah, from yeah. Orlando? No, I've been in Orlando for a little over a decade now. I moved over here um, straight out of high school because I didn't want to go to college immediately. So I, I went and worked for Disney for a few years. Oh, yeah? What did you do there? Uh, I was... I was a Jungle Cruise skipper. Sweet. I worked at the Great Movie Ride. I worked at Kilimanjaro Safaris, and I the big the the one that means everything to me means everything to you is oh. I worked at Star Tours. What? So you've right seen after the inner the workings? Oh, I've seen the inner <gasps> workings. Talk to me. How do they pick the Rebel Spy? Um. Tell me your secrets, know. Jim Mello. I don't know if I want to. So you always, so, you know, it's just like a... Just tell me this. Is it random or is it not? No, it's not random. Okay, that's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the tr- uh, so this is my trick to you is, one, kids. Kids are going to be always number one, you know, because kids. Because yep. they're little, little, little faces. You want to make their little faces happy or whatever for the trip. So go and in their parents like will be a happy. child. Yeah, go in dressed as a child is Got what it. I'm saying. Check. Um, Writing this down as you tell me. Okay. Or awesome. if you're an older man and you're making a weird face, they also get chosen a lot because it's like oh. a chance to like make fun of somebody. Oh, check. Dude, I have a weird face automatically. I mean, and it's it's great, right? Done. And then, so after, so when that photo is taken, this is my, my, my tip to you. I think I signed like an NDA or something years ago <laughs> okay. over this. I have no clue. Like, I don't know what I <laughs> well, signed. I was like 19 years old and I was like, sure, whatever. I don't we'll, care. we'll keep it vague. We'll use code names. But there is, if there was a photo taken for the rebel spy, uh huh. it's taken after, if you sit down on your right side, when the, when the person comes in from the right side to like check everything, there's like a little boom. That oh. moment is when the photo's been taken. <gasps> what? So now you know. So you need to have your glasses off and you need to be looking straight ahead or doing like a good goofy face or something. And oh, that dumb. will increase your chances. I'm just saying, Dude. I don't know if I violate it. If Disney wants to see me, they can't. They can get like. I have a few action, you know, Star Wars action figures and stuff. Like yeah. <laughs> what we'll do is, okay, so now we're a team, okay? Okay. If they come at you, what I'll do is I'll re-edit it and cut that out so they don't have the evidence anymore. Wow. I know. This is, this is great. Look at this. We've already oh accomplished so much. I, I This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life, and I'm just so happy to be here. You know, and, um, me too. Forgetting if I signed... Yeah, exactly. And DAs. <laughs> yeah. It's good to half remember legally binding contracts. If I'll I... tell you. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> if I've learned anything, that's the spice of life. The mystery of what you have and haven't signed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I was like, oh, man, now I forgot my. Oh, I was going to say, there's something special, though, about. So working there, um, besides, you know, being involved in, like, the Star Wars story in sure. a way. To an extent, um, there's something really cool about hanging out in the exit hall, and they're just playing um, the like ceremony, uh, the metal ceremony yeah. song. Why am I forgetting the name, the exact name of that song? Dude, oh, I know what you mean. Well, I know you know what I mean, but I feel <laughs> bad because like I know the actual name, and I'm like, yeah, we're just but they, they're not just the playing thing. that song. Yeah, 100. Like, yeah. This is totally not, you know, I have a really great memory for everything. That's the NDA uh, part you do remember. 
Yes. <laughs> we can't give we can't give actual title names. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude. But there there was that. I mean, there were there were times there was, and also like when you when you open the ride, you get to ride it in the morning. So like I would have what? I would ride it by myself because you have to test to make sure everything works. So you ride it by yourself, and you know. Like you get in there and you're just having your own little private Star Wars ride and you're, you know, maybe the music kicks on and maybe hypothetically, if you, you know, there's some like teariness in your eye. <laughs> yeah, naturally. Yeah. Not me. Yeah, no, obviously of course not. not. Yeah, obviously me. Not. Me, for sure. sure. I'll take oh, this yeah. bullet. <laughs> but, so so was... when it's just you, are you the rebel spy? No, because um, mm. you can't choose that. You, oh, you, you just you just kind of started. Okay, okay, I'm I'm starting to understand this mm-hmm. because I always thought their scanners were off because obviously I am the rebel spy, but it's never <laughs> picked me before. And I was like, I, I've almost got to the point where I'll walk up to the person who's working there and be like, "Listen, I'll buy the fifty five dollars shirt. Like, just pick me. All right, it's me. Please. Let's let's have Please. this agreement. I promise I'll buy the shirt." If you <laughs> I understand the purpose of this is super fun. Sir, also for you, the shirt. <laughs> you keep trying to slip them like an envelope. Yeah, exactly. Like, please. <laughs> I never, you know, it's 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 strange because like um, when people would ask me about it, it was usually like the worst people. So in an evil way, I would take satisfaction in being like, oh no no no, here's a cute kid, so they're gonna get it or something, you know, or yeah, like the old. Yeah. But, like, if you did it, I would not feel bad. You That's know, right. <laughs> I've broken through your defenses so quickly. You this did. This a test. Knock me down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm vulnerable now. Yeah. I will submit you into friendship, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's nuts. I had no idea. I had no idea you worked on Star Tours. Yeah. It's like yeah. one of the – it's like every once in a while I think I've mentioned it, like, on, on Twitter or something. Just, like, can you know, like, humble brag, put that out there. Yeah, like, a it was tiny a little, little, like, hey. Eh. So, I never uh, saw George, which bummed me out. Like, I just missed the actual opening, like, or the reopening of the attraction. Uh, did you uh, ride it before? Oh, yeah, dude. I had not. Oh, what yeah. was it like? You never rode it before? Um, I know. I know. It was it was super 80s. And, Sweet. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, I don't know how to really to describe it. it. It feels like... A late '80s Disney attraction, which I'm not like a like a Disney connoisseur or anything, but sure. um, but it feels like it's it's like the Ewok movie like type effects and stuff, so and they're playing amazing. the music. Yeah, 100. <laughs> you know, like it's the best thing ever. You got Rex. They, there was Captain Rex instead yeah. of Street Yeah, and that was fun. Um, so seeing him because he pops up in in Rebels again, which I'm sure like almost everybody who's listening to this is. Uh, probably knows that in some way but <laughs> that character design pops up again in rebels so it's fun seeing him i mean it was a lot of fun dude the first time i wrote it was um they used to do star wars celebration which i'm sure you remember oh yes but not celebration what am weekends. i saying star wars weekends it's weekends as sky Sweet. talker says <laughs> yeah and like so that's what like when i was a kid if i got lucky that's what we would go and do and that's the first time i wrote it so of course like you know you get on this this thing you're like 12 or 13 years old and there's this this thing that you know is in your marrow and it's about space wizards and like puppets and shit and just like everything which is everything i mean it's the most <laughs> perfect thing in the world and so uh and then all of a sudden you're immersed in it like not only are you like watching it on screen but you're watching it on a screen while you're moving while the music is just blasting in your ears and it's you know it's like this beautiful sort of sensory overload that yeah. first time here. so um so yeah Dude, I remember. that's so cool i remember I, I see i never got to write it before i so the weird thing i uh i was born in north carolina but i was raised in naples florida so mm-hmm. i moved down here when i was like six so orlando is like three and a half hours away right. and we couldn't super afford it growing up so my first time ever going to disney world i was 18 and right. i was with my now wife and i was like i need to I need to ride this. You don't understand. No. It's my time. And it yeah. was the new one, you know, walking under the ATAT. And uh, I wrote it five times in a row. She wrote, oh, yeah. it, she wrote it three and got motion sickness and was gracious enough to let me <laughs> ride it two more times. <laughs> I was like, you don't understand. There's 50 combinations. I get that we're on a trip together, but this is, I got to do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, 100%, dude. <laughs> you know? 
You just like like the doors open and you're like pushing over children. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Jumping over people. <laughs> you're not even old enough to realize what's happening. You just grab them by the tops of the heads. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. And now there's like the 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 scene with on Naboo and you're like going around Naboo Starfighters and I was like, It's it's fine, it's such a good ride. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still the spy, but it's a good ride. And I walked out, I was like, I gotta what if they go to a place that isn't Naboo? I have to find out. So now I know the inner workings. Make You do this is this is the best podcast I've ever recorded. I've given you, I've given you everything you need. That's right. So man. this has been nice. I uh, hope you have a good one. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Dude. So the other, uh, another question that I've wanted to ask you for a long time. Um, so how are you so good at writing? <clears throat> that is uh, a very flattering question. I really appreciate it. <laughs> the only kind um, I ask, really. I, uh, uh, I mean, how do you answer? I mean, thank you. That's <laughs> yeah. very nice of you to say. Um, I, uh, how about when did you, when did you start writing for funsies? Um, I've been writing since I was a kid, that so makes it's, sense. it's just natural. I don't think I realized I like that you could be a writer though, which sure. this is going to sound silly, but until like my early twenties, like I was like, Oh, I could like just do this. Like this thing I've been doing forever. Yeah. Like, I could just do <laughs> it. Like, you know, no. And obviously it's not that simple, but like. You know, the idea of it creeping it like, oh, like you could do this professionally if you worked really, really hard and cried a lot and hated yourself in front of a computer screen for yeah, a while. Of course. Like, you could <laughs> you can do this, Jim. Yeah. Do you have what it takes? <laughs> crying softly in front yeah. of a computer. I've written down like three words. I'm like, no, no, this is good. Yeah, exactly. This is the worst day of my life. Like, I don't even know what this means in the context of something I haven't even written yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's just always it's always been there the need to to tell stories, which is which is a, a great feeling, you know. It's 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 something that I I'm I'm really glad is part of my personality. Yeah, me too, because I follow you on Twitter, <laughs> and I <laughs> there have been so many times with either my wife and I or Savannah and I where we just go down your timeline and just crack up because you and I, it seems, granted, this is the first time we've kind of met. Yeah, uh, it we have a very very similar sense of humor. So Aww. like everything that you're saying, I was like, oh my god, this is exactly what's in my head. Like, <laughs> like, like I will never forget. There's this one tweet where you talked about like at celebration, and then you're like, you're just like jumping on the counter and yelling, and the manager's like, grab him, be careful, he kicks. And I just, it cracks me up still now. And just, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is me and this guy are gonna be friends. And yeah. that that was before I even had dived into uh, your comic. So I was like, oh, this guy, man. This guy, Opes can Opes. I'm feeling it, man. <laughs> that fucking idiot. Got yeah. it. <laughs> I was like, I just looked at your timeline. I was like, me too. Mm-hmm. And, then, and that was it. That was it. I I don't uh, I don't get it. It's like just one of the ways uh, to express. Um, I I don't know. I just make fun of fucking everything and yeah. like even <laughs> the things I love. So it's just hard for me not to. Um, like, I don't know why. I just was like, fuck it, man. Like, let's just <laughs> talk shit about Star Wars let's in a way that, that that is loving and hopefully, you know, people will understand. And it's nice. Thankfully, uh, most people get it, which is which is uh, it's been really awesome. I've only, I mean, it's strange because I've really only um, started to be active on my personal account in the last year. Like, you know, um, it's funny, too, because Last Jedi was the thing that made me be like, you know, I I kind of want to get not just involved in Star Wars fandom, but with the Star Wars comic, but like personally, yeah. Which is funny because literally, like, it was the hardest time to like be a Star Wars fan, like oh, in recent. Oh yes. <laughs> so it's like. What do you mean? Things are fun now. <laughs> they're they're just so delightful. <laughs> yeah. They're just it's so good. It's the best place to have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh man! So what? What is your? Because I know I know your work uh, from you know obviously a Star Wars comic, mm-hmm. but what is your side of the story of how you and Alex met and how this thing came to be? I didn't. So I didn't get to listen to all of Alex's podcast. Did Alex Good. go through the whole? He gave a little bit of a brief summary. A little bit of brief summary. So I I worked I worked still work for a comic shop chain in Orlando. Oh, and Alex. 
Alex Ray, this stupid boyish face. <laughs> I, when I say stupid, I mean, you know, in the most endearing way possible, comes bubbly walking into my shop <laughs> and he asked for some recommendations and he started talking my ear off. Um, and we became friends and we started working together sort of off and on, on comics. Um, and none of it really got off the ground. Mm-hmm. And... So basically how a Star Wars comic happened was I was watching Rogue One for like the third time in the theater Beautiful. and I was thinking about our first issue is about benthic two tubes. Oh yes. Oh we're going through them. Don't you fret. Oh, so <laughs> well I mean anyway, so 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 he so I just had this idea like for a story, like a real quick six pager, you know, or short story to tell. And I went to Alex and I was just kind of like, look, here's the deal. Like one, like Star Wars is something we both love that we're familiar with that an audience is familiar with. So you and I can tell stories and use that intertextuality to kind of um, to make it easier for us to reach like automatically reach like some sort of fan base, like some fan base that's the Star Wars fan base. At least part of it will will be interested simply because this is something that says Star Wars. 100 percent. Two, like we want to tell stories. So if you want, if you and I want to actually see, like if we can work together, um, let's do this. Let's try and like do this. It's, it'll only be six pages because part of the problem I think with a lot of web comics is like they either publish like one page like a day or one page a week or something like that, and that's just too slow. Like people want a story. They want something to bite into. Um, that sure. satisfies them, you know, and six pages isn't a lot, but six pages was just enough, at least initially for us to tell stories without us having to like put in the massive amount of effort it takes to create a comic. Sure. Like, I don't know if Alex talked about this, but I mean, I, with, with writing, you really can't quantify like how much time it, 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 it really takes. Cause you know, first draft, second draft, third draft, you know, lettering and all the, all the different components to the writing part. But, I mean, Alex would be at a computer for six pages. Alex is at the computer for, you know, 48, 60 hours, you know, depending on, on what it is. Yeah, and, he, you know, he absolutely killed himself to put out some of these. You know, and I did too, but I had, a like, the, the, the positive for me is that really there was no deadline. Right. Like I could, I could like turn these out and kind of mull them over, like put them away so I could come back to them a little bit fresh. Um, cause we already had like some stories lined up like initially, um, Alex on the other hand, especially in that first year would have to crank out one and immediately start on the next one in order to like keep that time. And he did it. I mean, he, he even managed an extra one cause we, we put out that annual later in the year. So yeah, dude. He was telling me like the the fact that he has like the what usually is like you know the the pencil or the letter or the ink or all this stuff is usually like five different people, right? And I was like, mother of God, you guys, you yeah, guys. No, he, and he's like Alex is one of those guys too who, um, he's very intelligent and he's good at picking up things quickly. Like I'm really I'm I'm pretty dumb. Like, I don't have I don't <laughs> I, have I got that about it. you. Oh, 100%, dude. Like, I'm, like my typo-ridden tweets just yeah. all over the place. Just like, dude, I just mash my fingers against that keyboard. I, I, but anyway. Proper Alex Twitter is, etiquette, really. <laughs> Alex is, like, inherently just very intelligent. He picks on things easily. So, like, the amount of programs that he used, um, he he uses and, and used to put together that comic is just incredible. Like, it's this little fan-made thing and it's funny because i'm talking about it now objectively like i wasn't some part of it but like yeah. but like, like you know you he, read <laughs> he 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 would model like environments um and ships and stuff and like vector graphic things just so he could like look at perspectives you know and it, it's just like the amount of work um that went into this little thing is just a, is, is just crazy especially on his end so and it shows that's that's the other thing. Like I, I tweeted about this recently that like a lot of things, specifically with you guys as well, uh, th- it's a really good time to be a fan, especially with the fan created content that we have. 
and like with you guys, I feel like from a from a fan of your work's perspective, uh, you guys have like a really good synergy where he's an incredible artist that can do, for all intents and purposes, anything. Mm-hmm. And, but that doesn't go anywhere if you don't have a story strong enough to equal the art. You know, if you have like really powerful art, but you have a terrible story, it's not going to come out tasting good on the other end. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I, no. I dig it. I dig it a lot. And, no, uh, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's, so two tubes was first, and uh, that—that's the other thing. I six pages is a hell of a lot of work, but it's also like you said, it's a really good, like beginning, middle, end story. It's long enough to where you're not going to digest it in thirty seconds. But it's also not going to take you all day to read it. And the stuff that you guys are putting out is... My favorite thing about it is, like, I feel like from, again, an outsider's perspective, I feel like you as a writer really get Star Wars. And I feel like that's where a lot of people with fan-made stuff a lot of times can kind of fall short. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of fan films basically just end up being a lightsaber battle in the forest. Which is cool, especially if done correctly, but it's also, like... There's some meat and magic to Star Wars that I feel like a lot of people haven't necessarily tapped into yet. And right. Again and again and again in your series, it's like this stands up with the comics that are being put out now that are canon. Like I can see this and it fits and I'm like, oh yeah, this is the character. You have, you have a grasp on who this person is and it fits within the story. And uh, congrats on that. Thanks, I'm, man. Man. That, I mean, it means a lot because obviously... Star Wars is something that I I think about too much and I love to death and it means a lot to me, even though we created the opportunity to tell the stories. Like, I don't think we ever took that lightly, you know? Sure. Sure. Um, Like it, 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 it really was important that we got the feeling of Star Wars, right. At least how it means, like what it means to us, you know, that sort of, um, breathless freneticism and coupled with like that compassion and that, that depth of character, um, which is funny because we, we, you know, we make fun of star Wars, you know, lightly because it's, it's this goofy, it's, it's such a goofy film series, but at the same time, like, you know, we would, you and I would not be talking if star Wars wasn't that, uh, infective in terms of like, uh, th- those characters and those settings and that those themes. Um, so it was, I mean, it's just a big love letter, basically. A yeah. Star Wars comic is a, is a giant love letter to Star Wars and everything that it, it, it meant to me and everything that it means to Alex. So Yeah, and it shows. It sh- that's the other thing is this comic shows a lot of care as well. You know, it's like y- you're having this creative endeavor, but it's not at, the expense of the thing that we all love. Because you said, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It is a series made for 12-year-olds. But it has those themes because, you know, George Lucas is a genius who's like, oh, they, just because they're 12 doesn't mean they're not going to get it. Well, and I, I was talk, kind of talking about this the other night. Like, you know, all, all, all children's stories, all that's saying is, is it's digestible. Yes, right? you're right. Perfect. It's, perfectly said. Like, and in, 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 I sort of said this last night, on, on Twitter, but like moral complexity is never equated to, you know, something being more relevant, you know? And I, and I think we like to, we, we like to pretend that for some reason. Um, oh, yes. we, we, we tend to patronize like the depth of feeling that, that, that children have, or that we, we even have now. And so, um, the stories that kind of stick around are always going to be those stories that return to, like the core things that all of us can identify with, you know, and Star Wars kind of hits all those notes, you know? I agree. I totally agree. It's like one of those things that doesn't have to be, it's like you said, it doesn't have to be this giant crazy thing to make it less true. And oh, it's, yeah. man, killed it. And that's the other thing, right out the gate. Normally when people are creating things, they build up to it. You're like, you know, like don't listen to the first like maybe 10 10 or 15, maybe 20 episodes of my show. <laughs> the, <laughs> the guests are incredible, but I had no idea what I was doing, and I come off sounding like it's just awful. Awful, oh. awful, awful. So I, so it's like it took me around like 20, 25, where I kind of hit my stride. And you guys, the first issue with Two Tubes was just so insane. Like, dude, 
Dude. Well, and, and again, like, Alex and I, we fucked up so much, though, before this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were trying to do, like, you should see, like, I don't know if Alex brought it up because he likes to bring it up, but yeah. <laughs> it still has, like, older pages of our comics. And, like, I'll look at scripts from back then, and you're just like, what? the fuck was going on <laughs> like, what were we talking about like um so i think by the time we got to a star wars comic and like i'm i love that people still love two tubes because i 100%. i love that story too it's just what it's like our first one like i you, still you just look at it critically mistakes. yes yeah i can still look at it critically but there's but there's um but i was saying to someone the other day because every time we release one of these it's always going to be stressful because, you know, you never know how it's going to land. Sure. Making and, anything and, that you're putting out is already like, dear God. Oh, yeah, dude. It's it's, hor- it's, 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 it's wonderful and horrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, no, there's, there's literally nothing like, like creating something and, and then putting it out there in the world. Um, and then it being very good and then me having you on my show to talk about it. I mean, that just has to work out. And, like, I appreciate – I'm like it, like, it thrills me that, you know, people like you react that way to it. You know, there's there's nothing more humbling than than that. So so what is it about two tubes? Just the way he looks and his voice it, I mean, and everything? Is, how fucking rad is – like, th- that's the Rogue best. One, though. It's like Rogue One is just, like uh, – Perfect. Well – it's perfect, yep. but like the design oh, of everything in that, I mean, it's just like, there's so many side characters and just the, the visuals and the ideas for the locales like Kefreen and, and I mean, Jetta is like the most just fantastically rich new addition, I think planet wise to the new Canon. I agree. And like, um, but I think there was just something about the, the idea of the partisans and the idea of these extremists who are kind of willing to do whatever it takes against the empire. And I also liked, and there was also, I guess the idea of, of it a lot centered around a stormtrooper in this place that has such a strong connection to this thing that we know it's this mis- mystical energy that exists in star Wars, right? For the force. Yeah. So the, a lot of the idea came from like, you know, this guy who's, in literally, you know, maybe the most mystical place in the galaxy, like, how does that affect someone, you know, who may be a little bit more compassionate? Yeah. You know, so um, I, I, it's one of those comics I really wish we could have opened up more in terms of, like, more page counts, because I would have loved to explore, like, that Stormtrooper. I forget his name now. He has a name. And uh, and then the Two Tubes dichotomy, but just the idea... Um, I hate stories that are like, oh, well, the bad guys are just as bad as the, or excuse me, the good guys are just as bad as the bad guys. And that wasn't really the point. The point was, um, yeah, you, know, you two tubes couldn't afford afford that. It's know? true. That's uh, that goes back to what I said before, and that it it fits in the canon. That's another thing. I don't know if you it, where the timeline came in. Like, if you'd read uh, Rebel Rising yet before two tubes, because they oh, fit. That wasn't out yet. Dude, they fit. So, there's so many, and we'll get to it. There's so many of your comics that fit so perfectly within the new canon before the books even came out. It's like your some of your issues are like, oh yeah, okay. So like, <laughs> <laughs> when you get to like Rebel Rising and you learn a lot more about the Partisans and like what they're willing to do and how hardcore they are, and right. then so it's like read Rebel Rising and then read Two Tubes issue of a Star Wars comic, and it's it's the same thing. It's just supplemental material that fits within the canon. Which is just cool, man. I like it. I mean, me, I mean, we always wanted to work within within the, the the world that was established because it's easier for you as a reader to digest that. You know, you're not in your head like counting continuity conflicts. You know what I mean? That's true. There's definitely a certain part of the fandom that's predicated to that, just completely discounting something. True. You know what I mean? Very true. So, like, it was always important for us to try to get everything right, you know, and we definitely made mistakes and had to go back and fix some things, like, in terms of, like, trivia and, and like, one of the big ones I will always remember is um, an issue, I think it's five, is on the surface, which is the one about the... The Death Star one. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
And in my, I had always just assumed, like I'd never, I didn't bother to look it up because I thought it was just like, oh, common knowledge that the Rebels are doing the Death Star run on that main trench that we see. Right, right, the right, Death right. Star. And they're not. They're doing it on the north, like the polar trench right. up there. And so I had to go back and fix that. So, like, there's <laughs> cool. stuff, yep, there was stuff like that where I was just like, I had no, like I had no clue. You know, sure, sure, but then just it, cool. It just I like that the attention to detail just adds more to it, and it shows how much you guys care about this stuff. And I think that's another big thing as to why this comic series has picked up as much as it has, is because you have that like really deep love for it. Like you both doing that shows, but it also shows like a love and a respect for it, because you know how much you also love it. And you're kind of doing it good service by giving it your all and that attention to detail kind of. I'm bad at words, Jim, but it's. You're great at words. You're the greatest wordsmith I've ever met. (laughs) I was like, is he writing the most perfect speech right now? Exactly. This is actually just a flatter show. Welcome. (laughs) (laughs) You know what it is? I'm a genuine. uh, I'm the type of person where I don't I don't know how to enjoy things moderately. Mm. And uh, I like things a lot. Yes. And your comic happens to fall into that bin of things that I like. Perfect. So I just wanted to tell you that. No, dude. And I'm, pretty, I'm just really bad at taking compliments. So. Yeah. Oh, dude. I'm the king at deflection. So I'm uh, I'm glad to meet another brother in arms in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Self-esteem, get out of here. So the second issue you had was uh, uh, the Mon Mothma one, the mm-hmm. Lady of Trandrilla. Uh, why Mon Mothma? Second one out the gate. Because I like her a lot, but that's a bold move. I think that I want to do... The goal was to try to do something different, especially towards the beginning when we were trying to do more niche stories. Sure. And I wanted to do a story about compassion, especially because at that point we were kind of entering um, the first term of Trump's administration. And I wanted oh, yes. to do a story about um, about compassion and Actually like a political leader... <laughs> who, um, you know, whether fictional or not, is someone who is wor- always working towards the better, the, the betterment of the, the people around her. And that whole era of her and Bale, which I know it's like like something that we always bring up, but Disney's, they need to get on it, is that Bale and Mothma political drama. Because even though we know how it ends up, like there's so much potential for, te- like just beautiful tension there. But like oh, yeah. those, those characters, like, like working to undermine the empire yes. like during that era is just so fascinating to me. So it was fun to bring in bail and kind of have this like conversation between like these early leaders of the rebellion. And then, you know, that I threw in Garmbell at bliss too, cause I thought it would be a fun nod. Yeah, we haven't it. really talked about him um, or, or I don't know if we are going to talk about him in Please. the new canon, but, um, but it was just some like, I like doing um, – that's one of my biggest things uh, – one of my favorite things about Star Wars as an adult because um, it's so easy to be cynical as an adult is is the compassion. Agreed. And a lot of the characters. So – um, so it just seemed, it just seemed right. You know, it seemed like that a, a logical step, something so violent and, and dark as, you know, the two tubes comic transitioning into something a little bit different, I thought was just – Kind of important. Yeah, it worked out. It yeah. worked out a lot. Thank you. I, just, I dig it. I dig it a lot. And then the the next one is a uh, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all my favorites, but there's a few that I'm like, oh <laughs> man, this one just hit. <laughs> <laughs> and I I talked about it a little bit with Alex. Um, so I've done a I've done a little bit of dabbling in the acting world, um, mm. which is the the most uh, I can ever say about anything I've accomplished. Um, <laughs> did a little dabbling, and um, one of my favorite things, uh, as far as acting goes, to watch are scenes with no dialogue, mm-hmm. because I feel like it's so much harder to convey anything without saying anything. Like with that's why I absolutely love like my favorite part of episode seven may be when Luke turns around, because there's so much there that for oh, two, yeah. for two years we're like. Look in his eyes. Is he crying? I think there's water. There might not be. I don't know. There's wind. What's happening? What does it mean? You know, right. like so, so powerful. And Mad About Me is one of those where it's just like with Alex's visual style and your story, 
Like the the synergy there to tell something that was like each panel, they're not saying anything. There's just musical mm-hmm. notes and everything, and you're just getting hit with this like emotion of like, oh wow, this is you know the oldest tale of like I wish I was doing something more. It's like I'm gonna do this to pay the bills, but like this and uh, dude, I don't know what to say, what to say except it's awesome and I love it. <laughs> so. yeah that was a that was a fun one and it's important like well what you you're just saying like one of my favorite quotes about sort of like creating is david fincher once said character is action yes meaning like you don't you know you you let your characters act you know you you, you give them behavior you don't make them say something it's just you know, it's like how we respond to people too. like we define a lot of people by by their actions, right? It works that way for characters too. So like, and also comics are just a visual form. True. And I really, I love a good silent issue of a comic. Like when you can feel that emotional weight conveyed simply through like the, the sort of rhythm of the panels on the page. I agree. I think is, is pretty stellar. So that one was fun to write because, um, you know, it, it was a lot of like structure that I was trying to, to do in terms of like what what my contribution to it was going to be and i don't know if alex told you but like he had to rush to get it out um so it ended up having like this sort of looser um darker lined style and his colors were just wild on it and it was just it's still i think one of the most gorgeous issues we've done i agree Um, like especially because he when he lets loose with color and stuff like that um it always just blows me away. And I remember um, getting those pages the first time and just being like, this is fucking incredible. Like, I, I'm so happy that, like, that I'm a part of this. So, yeah. Yeah. It is so, it's, God, it's such a cool story. Because that, mm-hmm. that's the other thing that I, one of the many, many, many things I love about Star Wars is, like, everyone has a story. Right. You know? And the fact that you took, like, you know, Figure and Dan. <laughs> and was like, he actually has other aspirations. You're like, oh, snap. What? Look at you adding depth to a character we <laughs> thought we knew, you know? Well, I think he, too, like, isn't it? I think in Legends, he's like a criminal or something, too. Yeah. So I just was like, well, it's new canon. I, I just want to tell this story. It seems to work with, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm writing a figure and dance story under the new canon. Yeah. You know, and he's just like this. He has these aspirations to be more. He loves music, and I want to tell like that, like kind of melancholy story about about that feeling. Yeah, you know? and man, did it come across! This is what I mean. That synergy that you guys have is just mm, chef's kiss. Yeah. You know? I, well, you know, again, Alex is incredible. <laughs> <so>. I think <laughs> you're both incredible because uh, without your story, there's no art. Without the art, there, you can't see it. So, mm. as the fan, <laughs> I'm just winning regardless. So, uh, ha. Um, <laughs> and then you tackled uh, IG-88. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I love this one, which I'm going to say for all of them, just letting you know. But, so, I mean, you can just say it as much as you want, man. I'm, That's totally fine. Oh, I'm I'll fine. take it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> exactly. You better. Because um, you can't leave unless you hang up, in which case it's recorded. Uh, but, the <laughs> <laughs> but the hollow shells is really cool because I, I remember – uh, in like the old EU, they did this thing where like when IG88 first woke up, and he just murders like all the scientists that just built yep. it. Yep. And uh, this felt very like that, mm-hmm. you know. And I just I dug it. I dug it yeah, I, I love IG88. Like, but the problem is, is I love the idea of him. Like, I think a lot of us suffer suffer from this with our favorite characters because we almost create like an I- idea of who they are, especially when there's almost nothing out there. What? about no i know i know you would never you would never understand please nope definitely not me Mm -mm. well i mean at least you got all those jedi apprentice books though you got all those thank god but the uh but um, the hollow shell is a star wars comic which in my opinion is also canon but go on (laughs) (laughs) the um no but it was fun because i love the like something I, i always wanted to tackle is you know, with with stories about like like robots or droids, there's always they always talk about free will, yeah. Like, and that's this aspiration. And I wanted to do something about a droid who sees free will as like a problem. Yeah. Like 
he's he's glad that he operates within this purpose that he he has automatically like there's no searching there's no doubt there's nothing there's just this like this is what i do this is who i am and um i thought that like that thought really intrigued me so that was a really fun one um to write especially like the last page and stuff where i got to i got to editorialize a little bit maybe that's not the right word but um I got to play a little bit with with the with his speech and everything. So you did, you did. It's a that's another thing. It's a it's a really cool. Like I like the way your brain works when it comes to stuff like this because you're uh-huh. you're tackling things that I wouldn't have even thought of. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like that idea as well because like you tackled the idea of like the crippling uh, of possibility. It's like when you have so many things at your options and you're like, I don't know what to do. You know, whereas like if you it's like constraint a lot of times can breed the best creativity. Right. And uh, IG-88 is kind of like, oh, you have options. Why? That's just a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. you're wasting. Yeah. Cool. The, so like if I ever got a chance to write something official for like Marvel, I would love to do like a little IG-88 mini playing around with that idea. That'd be really um, cool. In the in the, in the far off in the imaginary land of like maybe, but I mean, you say that, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and then, like you said, you've got the uh, you've got the on the surface. And yes. did you ever read um, uh, what was it? It was Greg Rucka's um story in from a certain point of view, where it was like the I forget the name of it, but essentially. Your comic reminded me of that, this one specifically, because in that, remember now. in that, I forget what it was called, but it was like, it was at the same time, it was at the Battle of the Death Star, and it was like each ship that has a pilot in it has a ground crew of like four or five back mm. at base, and it was like showing you that when Porkins died, there's like five or six people that were in charge of getting his ship fueled, and they were friends with him and running the simulations and all that, and their friend just died, and you got to see the other side of that thing. And I really, really like that. I love Lost Stars for that reason. Right, you yeah. Know? And this felt like that, where you've got the Death Star, and like it's so big that there are people that are like, oh, on the other side of this moon, there's stuff going on? Ah, it'll be fine. And they're just like having a conversation. Like, oh, you ever seen that? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's it's funny because, well, one, I need to go back and reread. Well, I have the audio book of certain point of view. And it's like, I think Ruck is one of the best Star Wars writers in the new canon. Like I, I love when they give him stuff. Agreed. Um, I mean, he's a great comics writer. Also uh, writer in general. But um, I, I think that was one of those things where I, I think in the goofiness of Star Wars, you know, and the space fantasy and the Buck Rogers-ness of it, we forget like the Death Star is massive. Yeah. Like, match it so i just thought it was interesting that like this whole like at you know for lack of a better term like epic thing is happening at this other part of the battle station and like miles and miles away there's just this guy in command of like this 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 certain section you know of it like just kind of going about his thing and they're like oh yeah because basically you know the idea was like we're in florida and it's like hearing about an attack you know, in New York or something. Right, right. So, um, and that's kind of like the, the overall feeling that we were trying to go for there. It's like the, the immensity of the Death Star and uh, how crazy it was that when it's destroyed. And, yeah, you know. and the people literally didn't see it coming. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. And then, and then from there, we get to uh, some original characters. Mm, Which mm, is mm, mm. I'm dancing to my Man. original characters. Original characters. Original characters. That's the song I wrote. I wrote yeah. that song. I could tell. Like uh, I'm you. glad you sent that to me beforehand so I could do backup vocals. Mm. So it's a real, uh, real, real synergy <laughs> moment there. <laughs> that will be available for download at the end of the show. Um, <laughs> you, you had, you had Wild Space after that, mm-hmm. and I have to say, creatures are uh, very much a favorite of mine in Star Wars. So right, like Stins, everything, but go like, on. Like everything, but go on, indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, you made a Sullustin and a yes. Duros. 
Yes. And they're just kind of doing their thing with a uh, rad mag. And talk Aww. to me. Talk to me. Did it- no, it was just fun. It was. Um, I love. I love those species, and I always wanted to do. I wanted to do something kind of out after everything that we had done before was at least familiar in some way. So I wanted to do something kind of different, you know, Yeah. in terms of wild space is this open thing. I guess the idea is derived from like the Duros who, you know, I think in legends, they're probably, it's probably in Canon too now, but they, you know, legendary hyper hyperspace travelers and these two kind of, um, like weirdo, you know, like like a per, like Star Wars does those famous duos. Like I wanted to make a famous duo out doing like weird exploration stuff in space that was kind of supposed to encapsulate like the feeling of Star Wars, um, in general, like that that fun, yeah, uh, breathless sort of feeling. And so I I'm modeled chased by the Empire, <laughs> right? And so there's a lot of. And it was fun because Rad is a lot. I, I tried to write Rad like Alex oh, sweet. and my more my <laughs> my more cynical side and, and myth and throat pick side was Mag, which uh, probably sounds egotistical because he's supposed to be a genius. <laughs> but, uh, you got to draw inspiration where you can. You know, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but that, I think I think that one holds a, a special place, um, especially with Alex. That was the first time he got to. I mean, he designed the ship i don't oh, think it's right. ever mentioned in the script but he designed the ship it's called the ash rabbit oh sweet <laughs> and um like we had i mean I, there's a there's an unproduced mag and rad script that um that's still out there unfortunately it will never it probably won't ever see the light of day but there is one more story um with them so the but, petition is at petitions.org slash mad rag <laughs> dot tell jim to make it anyway um, dude, oh, well, I, I love, this is what I mean. Like, I feel like you have such a good grasp of this universe and these characters and whatnot that you can even create your own and it still fits. Mm-hmm. It, it still makes sense, you know? And, uh, that thank you because it's just more content for us, you know, win, win, win here. I'm and just I crying it. softly to myself. <laughs> <Yeah. right now. laughs> and I dig them. I like the idea that. That's one thing that I'm really hoping in, like, the new canon and they explore more is speaking aliens. You know, like, give aliens their time in the sun. Like, let them be more. We've got Chewie, which is awesome. And then we got Pow in Rogue One. Well, I wish we would have <laughs> got more. But, I, you know, we got a good Carabast, you know, from him, which is just ama- well, amazing. And then the best, like, the best, one of the best new characters in canon is Shriv Surgoth, oh, who 100%. appeared at Battlefront 2. Yes, and he's just phenomenal and needs to be in everything totally as far agreed. as I'm concerned. So. <laughs> when they're when they're on top of the walker as it's like descending into oh the my lava, God. it's my favorite line <laughs> like ever. <laughs> he's like, you know what? Here at the end, I'm glad I'm dying next to you. He's like, well, thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's totally not kidding. <laughs> I feel like Lando's the kind of guy who completely gets it, but he's going to take it at face yeah. of value just to piss you off. <laughs> so that whole interaction, like that level. Um, oh, I, love I, I also like, if we're going to talk about Shrew for a moment, Let's I love the, the scene where they, uh, Aiden and Shriv are leaving on Jackie to get in their X-Wing. Oh, yes. And, like, Del and Aiden have that moment, and then Shriv's like, oh, I'm that's fine. fun, that's <laughs> fun. I'm, I'm just your best friend. I was yeah. the coolest guy you've ever met, but that's cool. You can talk yeah, to her, you know. Like, I almost died, but, hey, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's such a great character. He really so. is. And, I, God, aliens, man. They need their time in the sun. And I, I love it when we get that. And you gave us more of that. So, yes, please. And then, yeah. Alex, we talked about how much, because I asked him, I was like, you know, a lot of people that do it, it specific fandom-type comics, they usually have something they like to draw a little bit more. It's like, I like drawing all of it, but, you know, aliens oh, yeah. just have a little thing. And he was like, the ships. It's got to be the ships. Yeah, he loves it. So I got. I, it's really cool that you got to make your own characters, he got to make his own ship, and it came out that good. I just, man, man, well done. Well done. Mm. And then we're like, those were original characters. Let's get a new batch here. And then we have No Emotion, which mm-hmm. uh, Jedi, 
Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. It's like you're mm-hmm. in my head giving me what I'm wanting. <laughs> no emotion is great. Great. Because it tackles that exact idea of like, I mean, I'm going to bring up Qui-Gon here. And oh boy, are we going in in a little bit. <laughs> but when he talks about like, being a Jedi is not an easy challenge. And even if you succeed, it's a very difficult life. And yeah. this issue shows that. It's yeah. like it's like they they still have the emotion. They're 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 feeling creatures. Well, and that's you know, if you really want like if you want me to go fucking like one of my Let's go. Like, I, I have very few things that make me angry angry <laughs> at, in Star Wars where that's I true. get like really defensive. Um I will always defend Obi-Wan Kenobi. Same. I'll always defend Han Solo. Also same. <laughs> but one of my biggest things is when people go after the, the the whole Jedi code and the idea, the, the the literalism that people use when when talking about like the Jedi code in terms of like oh the Jedi aren't supposed to feel emotion that is not they all like throughout the prequel trilogy the Jedi acknowledge like that's not what we're saying what we're saying is emotion is this thing that sometimes you need to overcome in order to make the best decision for Thank yourself you, Jim. you and wow. so. I wanted to do no emotion was really about that sat self sacrifice. Yes, perfect. That's, That's the words. That's what we need. Self sacrifice. I've never you know. heard it put together before now. Wow, the bell just went off and that was a roller coaster. Right, and that's and that's like that's 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 what kind of makes like the character of Obi Wan and and all those characters. And yes, but I'll tell you, like I think the late Republic Jedi are flawed. Mm-hmm. There are issues there. Mm-hmm. Obi Wan does make. He he makes some bad decisions, not out of any. He just doesn't understand certain things. I think yep. about Anakin, because um, yep. all he's dude. You're gonna get me like going on Obi Wan, and let's if you do it. Do, <laughs> well, no, like here's okay. I said this like a million times before. Let's dance, on Twitter. Jim. <laughs> let's dance together. Put your arms here. Grip my waist. Here we go. Okay, I got the waist. Cool. So you got the okay. shoulder, mm-hmm. and back two, three, one, two. Oh, da- da- damn it! Hold on, I'm left footed. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go. <laughs> So Obi Wan is like, Obi Wan believes so much in Anakin, you yep. know. Yep. He be- he believes that Anakin is such a good person. He believes completely, kind of via Qui Gon, that Anakin is the chosen one. Like it- o- Obi Wan's just a guy who has um, so much faith, Agreed. which explains, you know, why he's so steadfast in a lot of those beliefs. Yep, and it's to the point where he's blind. He blinds himself almost to what Anakin is becoming because he truly believes, like, no matter what happens, Anakin is going to become this great Jedi. Yep. you know what I mean? Oh yeah. He de- he knows things are going on with Padme, and he knows, but like he also believes completely that you know Anakin is going to be this guy. There's literally a, no other outcome, and it sets himself up. For everything that follows, yep. you know, you're right, and it's and it's and that's so heartbreaking. Like I, like, his uh, arc is the it'll rip your heart out, man. Yeah, if you give it a chance to, and you know, there's all you know, poor Obi Wan gets so much of like George Lucas's own like, like, well, I get you know, he's gonna be his dad now, so someone has to explain like why Obi Wan didn't say that. That's laid on Obi Wan's doorstep, you know, as from a meta standpoint, but mm-hmm. but. You know, this tying back around to the idea of like I wanted to tell a story about people who feel a call to to service and sometimes how that service or these people feel like they need to sacrifice certain aspects to make sure that they are, are they can be completely dedicated. So um I wanted to do like a fun little Indiana Jones character in, in my Yeah. And it was fun to do like a like a like uh, also sort of an Indiana Jones, like rogue astrogationalist, like archaeologist too. And they somehow meet. Um, that was the, one of the most challenging scripts. Really? Because there's so much that needs to get across for you to understand the transformation that the characters were going through. Like I must have rewritten that up till like three o'clock in the morning, like three or four times. And even now, like there's things about it where I'm like, I missed this. It doesn't feel right here, but you know you kind of have to just let these things go. Sure, but um, it was it was really hard 
balancing like as much that has needed to go in that story while making it clear, you know, especially with the time jumps that are going on, because there's like they get to the ship and then all of a sudden they're fighting on a bridge. Then all of a sudden there's a bounty hunter there. Then all of a sudden there's a holocron and it's yelling at her. Yeah. And so you have to like try to like it was just a challenge for Alex and I um, to really squeeze all that into the six. I think maybe that one was seven pages. It might just be six still. I don't know how we did it, like, thinking about it. But I remember finally, like, getting it done in terms of lettering and, like, the final draft at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning one night after just sitting there for hours, like, trying to rework it. And uh, I'm glad, you know. It was fun to – the best part um, was writing – I love those characters, but I loved writing Yoda, too. Oh, yeah. And then – that's another one that that had a sequel too, where those characters what? came back and we, we just never got to it. We were going to do it last year as one of the ones, but I just, I, I didn't like the script enough. And unfortunately we had to, we have our final, final issue coming out. So we just never got to, I never got to revisit it, but it was going to be the more forwarding of um, my and Nick Nick Ardome, um, their story. Yeah. Sad, never got to it. Man. Again, that petition is at pleasemakejimdoit.com. Um, <laughs> dude, such a good, such a good issue. And yeah, you got, with Alex, I was telling him his favorite character is Yoda. And he was talking about the the option to draw Yoda coming up was just the best. And it's, it's such a cool and story. And he did that panel. Like, we were, again, we were, we had, I had to rework a lot of stuff because of space. So we were talking about how we were going to do that last page because there's so much dialogue on that last page to try to make it flow. And the main panel that's in the center of the page where it's kind of like the dialogue is sort of flowing down over, like Maya's on one side, Yoda's on the other, and the middle is a panel of them like together. Right. And it's flowing down between them and how – he ended up structuring that. It just was perfect. It's so good. So I was really proud of him, um, especially working with the amount of like shit that I gave him on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, cause, cause that's the thing with writing comics is you have to remember, like someone has to fucking draw this dude. You can't just be like, well, there's this and there's a party going on in the background and you know, there's 4,000 land speeders too. And you know, like sure. you have to be cognizant of that. So, so the artist doesn't want to stab you. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, you want to continue. Man, that that makes a lot of sense. I feel, that sounds like it'd be really difficult to tell a story, but to also work with the art and to keep in mind that there's no, there's very little, if ever, like uh, descriptions of what's going on because that's what the art does. And then there's the dialogue within the bubbles, and you get like a tiny little section. So, how do you find that median? It sounds like it'd be a lot of work. It's it's all yeah it's all structure and stuff and you have to balance like okay how much do I need to include in this panel description without encroaching on the artist because sure. you want to give them like they're the co-creator you want to give them the ability to visually to visualize that in, in the way that they like so sure sure it's a symbiotic relationship for sure a mm-hmm. comic that's a it's a really good collaborative medium I think I love it. And when oh, done so correctly, oh boy! Oh my God, Brian! I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like fucking fist fight you if you don't <laughs> stop complimenting me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my friend, I'm pretty good at dodging these days. Um, <sighs> and then you got to Jedi Brian, man. Okay, this is what I do. Um, <laughs> and, and then you go from there to the Hunter, which is <laughs> the the. How do you how do you say it? Do you say Boosh, Bausch, Bosch? I I've always said Bosch. Okay, I feel like I do too, but now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm really questioning myself. I I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've heard some people say Boosh too, so who? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm all, I like I also just say I don't I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a made up. I think we can all, you know. Yeah, it's, it all works. It's, it, it's like you know the the species with the head tails. How do you say it? Uh, I've always said Twi'lek. I feel like I do too. But then again, it's like the second I start thinking about it, I'm like, I don't know what I say anymore. Yeah. It's, it's like when you have a word that you say over and over and over, and then it starts sounding weird, like mm-hmm. like bowl. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Start saying bowl a bunch. You'd be like, that's, that's not a word, but it is. Yeah. It really is. But no, I, there's, I'm trying. There are words that I, never mind. I'm going to get sidetracked now because I'm thinking there's definitely a word that I was thinking recently, and I was like, I can't believe that's a fucking word. It doesn't. Really, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even sound like a real word. This is a liar's word. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is a false sound that we've accepted as a word. <laughs> That's how I feel about bull. <laughs> I I like this idea because this is, again, there's something where your brain is just connected into Star Wars in a way to where the hunter, uh, there's a Forces of Destiny episode. That's totally this. Mm-hmm. That's Leia getting the, the boosh, boosh, boosh. That's mm-hmm. now its full name. Uh, costume and I was like oh hey look at this here's how oh here's a different retelling it's like how forces of destiny is already a slightly different retelling of something right it's this that episode of forces of destiny is a slightly different retelling of your story so congrats on that (laughs) you know it just kind of worked out (laughs) we were that was like one of those bittersweet things is every time something that was in the comic kind of falls in the in in the in the steady march of canon like we're a little bit sad but it's also you know it's cool it's cool to get these different stories and it doesn't just like the eu isn't invalidated if you have an emotional connection to it you know our stories aren't either um i feel like it's kind of when like when they reintroduce it you know like with all the eu you had thrawn and then when thrawn came to rebels you're like oh snap i feel (laughs) that way about your comic it like adds validity to both sides and it oh, just kinda, that's a good way to look at it. I appreciate that. That's how, that's how I feel. I feel like if there's ever any notes that hit the same, it's like, oh, okay, this just adds more legitimacy, uh, if you can even use that word, uh, <laughs> to it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, obviously this is – to be fair, your stuff is exactly as canon as Legends. So, hey, now. Boom. Just Perfect. saying – we should, I mean, I on it. We should add that banner to the you could, to the website. Just be like I legends. Mean, it's, it's legend. Think about it. It technically is. <laughs> it's on the same. It's on the same wavelength there, and uh, I'll be I'll be the the flag bearer. And uh, <laughs> speaking of, uh, of you'll be the kitster. I will be the kitster. I will be screaming wizard and missing high fives everywhere I go in the name of a Star Wars comic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so speaking of eu and whatnot and the old goodness um the you go from the hunter to the dark lords mm-hmm. which uh is just full of nods to the greatest video game of all time mm-hmm. um knights of the old republic mm-hmm. dude dude having darth <laughs> vader meet all the old sith lords crazy it was, you know, what's funny is that script went through a few things. That script, so basically, when we started, we weren't going to write any major, major, major characters. Um, but Alex and I also realized, like, they're pretty much like we're never going to get another chance to tell like a Darth Vader story. So, like, let's do a Darth Vader story. Yeah, why not? And then the other thing was, I've always been bothered. By so comics are this visual medium, and so much of their language isn't just the actual words on the page or the visuals. It's in the lettering, it's in the sound effects and stuff. So I always am bothered when people don't take advantage of that and and create like a Darth Vader speech bubble. Sure. So like I did this shitty sketch of what I thought it would be <laughs> like, you know, and I think I have a picture of it, but it's horrible. It just looks terrible, but. Um, and Alex and I literally sat for like hours and reworked this so we could try to make like make sure that the, the you can't hear it, but we wanted you to feel his voice when you looked at the page. You yeah. know, like you know exactly the sort of inflection that Vader is using on the page. And then it was funny because well, the original script of that was him building um going to mustafar and building his his castle like deciding where he was going to build his castle that's cool so it's funny that all that stuff with the charles soul series happened right that's what i mean you're plugged in (laughs) but i forget that like i forget why we didn't end up doing that i think it's because there was like that rumor for a while that like palpatine forced him to build it there yep and i was like 
this is really predicated on him like having this decision. Oh, and no, it was because it had a scene in it that was very similar to Darth Vader like twenty four that Kieran Gillen won, where um, he meets like Anakin Skywalker. Like, and he fights him in, like, a dream sequence or whatever. It had something like that in it, and we were both like, well, this is way too similar. So I had to rewrite it, and so we moved it to Korriban and made it about Vader facing, like, the past, yeah. which I thought was a lot of fun. Um, and then, then, then the future, in a way. Yeah, that's true. You even get a little Kylo nod in there. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, and that panel's gorgeous. It is. Know? But writing Vader and all his his arrogance, you know, especially that young Vader that's um, or younger Vader um, pre pre Empire Strikes Back Vader that's so like convinced of his own power, you know. Sure, he's uh, like that, the guy who eradicated the Jedi from his point of view. He's like, I I am literally an unstoppable, unfeeling monster, and I'm going to prove that. You're like, all right, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, yeah, we had a lot, lot of fun doing that one. That was probably our best re- received, I think, before Hope came out, which for obvious reasons is the best ever received. Sure. Um, it's but, yeah. such a cool, that, what I like, I mean, <laughs> again, everything. Uh, but a thing I really liked about this issue was how you had like the Sith Lord talking to him switch up. You know, it was like Bane first, and then it was Malgus, and then he goes into this courtyard, and you've got like, you've got Kreia, you've got Nihilus, you've got Scion, like all these EU stuff. It's, I think it's just something about like those of us who were like giant EU fans seeing those things in any capacity that just like, oh man, just feels good. Yeah, man, and I mean like we, you know, I'm of the age, and you are, you are where we grew up and that that was the stuff coming out that was exciting about star wars so it's really easy um to get excited when we see it and it's easy um to want to put that into something you know yep yep and and it's like at this point regardless of like certain rumors that happen to be floating around today like we that that whole uh, universe is open for play still, or that section of the timeline yeah. is now open for play. So those characters definitely could have existed, or they might not, or they might be different. But it was still fun um, to tell a Vader story. You know? Yeah, it showed, and uh, I appreciate it. Being a fan of the Kotor series, it's like Thank it's just you. cool. It's just cool, man. It's just cool when that happens. Almost as cool as a a Wookiee with a vibro axe. Dude. Oh. <laughs> Dude. What a I'm, cool this idea. This is a forgotten issue of a Star Wars comic. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever talks to me. Like, every once in a while, what? people are very nice and they'll mention this issue because it's such a, a throwaway. Um, I disagree. It's Yeah, no, it's not. It, it, it's, it's it was so just like good. a fun issue. It's just a neat little. And, and just the the end with like, man, I really hope we don't stay here. <laughs> it's, like, it's such a cool like you got a Wookiee with a vibro axe fighting wampas what that's star- if that's not star wars i don't know what is it was it was such yeah that was that was a lot of fun it was we were trying to do like a horror tie-in too so it had i wanted it to have like a little bit of like the thing vibe and it was cool to do yes. the the opening of um like the the beginning of construction on Echo Base and stuff. I mean, those first couple panels are just gorgeous. You know, Alex does. I love using like I always put stuff at dawn or dusk because I love that lighting in life. And Alex really does that well, so it's super cool. I agree. Um, I like how he lit the cave up when they've got like the light stick things. Oh yeah, the glow rods. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so mm-hmm. cool. And then you, that adds to the kind of horror aspect to the bodies hanging upside down. Yeah, just, it was. It's like you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> How have you fooled us for this long, Jim? <laughs> just screaming, just screaming on <laughs> yeah. fucking Star Wars Twitter, and then it's like, oh yeah, here's this thing too that I do. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> I'm not gonna question your methods here. I'm just thankful that they happened. You know, I'm into it. I'm into it. And then you've got the Gonk episode, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I. So have they made like a like a power bank in the shape of a gonk droid yet? I have no clue, but they need to. They, I mean, that seems like an yeah, obvious right. 
you've got those like car do. chargers that are like R2 and they go in your cup holder. How they haven't made a gonk droid powered bar. Is somebody needs oh to get on Oh my god. This. Imagine. What the fuck is going on? We need to we need to license Star Wars and Right? Do this. Listen, I'm not saying I want to cut from it. I'm just saying I want one. <laughs> so, if somebody's listening and they make a power bar, power bank thing in the shape of a gonk droid, I just want one, please. So, just putting that out there. Also, read the Star Wars comic called Gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, that one, that's one of my favorites. It's really cool. It's really pretty. Yeah. It, no, it's it's gorgeous. And um, it was going to... It was going to end a lot more darker initially, but I changed oh it. Up <laughs> oh, yeah. It was going to end, like, where the gonk droid, like, sees the stormtroopers coming. Uh, oh, no. And <laughs> That's I, just mean. It just it obviously <laughs> didn't work tonally. It was just, like, it, 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 so we... You know, that's what you do. You write it out, and then you're like, this is terrible, and you, you go back <laughs> and fix it. You're like, even I'm not that mean. <laughs> I like that it's, like, the, the gonk infomercial is playing across it. You know, it's like this guy isn't gonna feel anything, and it's gonna be a tool, and it's gonna be fine. And then you're like, mm-hmm. oh no, he's just he's just doing his thing, just doing his part, little gonk man. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, we got we got to do a few things that we wanted to. We wanted to do a gonk story. We wanted to throw in an Obi Wan nod. Um, we wanted to do a Barry Sons thing. So it was, yeah, that was that's what so one of my favorites. It's one of the ones I think um, Alex and I are most proud of. So. Well, rightfully so, rightfully so, and then after that we've got it's hope after this, mm-hmm. and hope is another one. It just, it just feels real. That works for all of them. You know, I'm trying to find one here. I'm thinking, I'm like, is there one that really doesn't fit? No, it's almost like you did your research. But <laughs> hope is a really cool idea because you've got this tie-in to where you know in Episode Seven you've got Ray literally being like Luke Skywalker. I thought it was a myth, and you're like, oh no, these people that save the galaxy would be heard forever and then you have another alien telling the story to ray dude get out of my head (laughs) yeah um i wrote that like the summer in the summer so this was still pretty not fresh fresh but like carrie had just um passed away and so Mm -hmm. it was hard to it's hard to uh to really, to really do like service to what a important person that is to us as a as fans, absolutely, um, and just how influential both Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia are in general. So it was, I th- yeah, obviously, I think most people would agree uh, that's probably our our best issue, um, and uh, I'm just really proud to have been a part of it. It's very, very good. Yeah. And just the levels. I mean, it, it's a fitting, beautiful tribute to Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. As you said, you got an Athorian that, like, within the canon are, like, the travelers that tell stories and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, I love that stuff. And it's, you like, know. her, Leia inspiring the next generation in the same way that, like, life imitates art, imitates life. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. well done. Well done. Yeah, it was, I, I, and I, I love that about um, Force Awakens where, these the characters we know so well are these ideas you know they're just characters to these this next generation and so it's it's it was interesting to play with that yeah and then I, that's another thing i loved about episode 8 with like the little kids telling the story mm-hmm. of the battle of crate mm-hmm. like, no that's that's it that's that's right there luke skywalker restoring hope to the entire galaxy really cool and also a nice meta commentary on star wars in general yes Man, it, people know what they're doing. It's very strange. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> uh, contrary to a lot of Twitter discourse. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have one of one of my favorites that, like, like I said, there's a few of these. Like, I love them all, but there's a few that like just scratch that itch. And Allies is one of those. I really, really like this one a lot. It's Clone Wars. It's so Clone I, Wars. You know. It's a Jedi doing his thing. Like I, I really the I was telling Alex this the uh, the Breshins, Breshines, but whatever you call them, the alien species on this planet. Yeah, yeah, the main. Yeah, I think so it's cool. Breshins. Such a cool design. 
Like Alex did a really, really good job. Yeah, he he really runs away um, with design sometimes. Like when he did Mag and, and Rad for uh, Wild Space, and you know, like there have been a few times where I'm like, yeah, I just created this. You know, alien race. Uh, here you go. You know, like, yeah. run. <laughs> it just says and, new and alien race. <laughs> you know, like the, I mean, we 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 kind of described them as, or I described them as, you know, sort of nomadic and living in the in the mountains and stuff, and these mining communities and and kind of being like a lower tech race and everything like that. But then Alex just takes it and, and runs, and um, and then the the, the Nepalese sort of feeling to it i yes. think because of the just because of the what i i mean i think that's what i described in a way we were describe i was describing to him and so we just kind of put that all together in, in the the brushes and then um it, it worked with plows like the whole the flow of the comic which was this you know um uh, again about like the compassion that's supposed to drive the jedi you know, when Poe's Poe's up there, he's he like I don't ever count like Obi Wan, you know, because Obi Wan's Obi Wan. Yep, yep. But Poe and like Devil Balaba are my like two like off offshoot Jedi that I just adore, and so it was that it was fun. It was it, you know, I'm gonna say that a lot because every one of these is you know even when they were horrible. But, yeah. <laughs> Like, even when it was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is the stupidest thing I've ever written. Like, it was also a lot of fun to do. It's always good when you come out the other end with that. Because mm-hmm. I've been in movies before. Where I was like, it was just a horrible experience all around. So, yeah. you know, good on you mm-hmm. <laughs> for that. I, I really, Jedi, anything Jedi, I'm like, I will devour it. Jedi mm-hmm. Brown, my thing. Uh, above all else, the Jedi. And... Plo Koon in this issue, again, you're just getting it, man. I keep saying it over and over, but stop doing it, and then I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> and I love that he's there, and like the guy's trying to vilify him. is oh, he's going to be violent. He's like, I really don't want to do this. but And then he even warns the crowd. He's like, there's about to be a little bit of violence. Please don't be afraid. And just lifts his hands up in the air. <laughs> Wolf shoots the, the, the manacles off, and it's just, it's so cool. And once he defeats the threat, he's like, Okay, what were we saying? I was like, "Oh, it's such a <laughs> Jedi thing to do." Right, and it, the, like the it was it was fun doing that again with Alex because there's I wanted there to be a grace to it, which Alex really conveys in that scene where every panel kind of flows very easily to the next one. Like he's not, you know, um, he's very much, I guess, in the force, you know, at that yes. moment. So so it just kind of flows. It flows through him and. Alex really got that across. He did. He did. And then back on the the original thing where you're you're linked in and then somebody else took the ether and was like, "Hmm, let me take Jim's idea and just expand upon it a little bit." We've got we've got Yeah, Alex is just like huffing. Yeah. Like he burns he burns the scripts and just is like huffing them. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "I'm sensing, hold on, he's got like a séance going on handmaidens in the near future." <laughs> and you're like that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. What are they, spies that die for the queen? Sure, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And then there's an announcement of Queen Shadow, which is a handmaiden book also. You're like, oh, he 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 did catch something in the fumes. Well done. He looked into the flames. <laughs> 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 and it worked. It worked. I really enjoy this one. The colors of the handmaiden was very different. And, yes. And I dug it a lot. Yeah, um... I think because Naboo is is so stark in, in terms of its design, I think that really is conveyed by Alex's coloring in this one. So I agree. And the story, so what uh what made you want to tackle the handmaidens and make them, I, you know, badasses like they are? I've always liked the Naboo culture, so I I Same. told this on Twitter. Um, but when I was a kid they had that incredible cross sections, the episode one. Oh yes. Incredible cross sections, and there was one uh, for the the the, and the Thede Palace core. Yes. And they talk about the gates, you know, the gates that lock. You know, I'm sorry, I'm bringing up the gates that eventually <laughs> robbed you of your of it's your okay. boy. But... It also gave me the greatest moment in all of Star Wars. So that's that's fair. That's yep. fair. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a reason we're 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 diving into that one last. 
<laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, yeah, so, and it talked about how, like, it just gave some world building on the gates, how they were, like, the six gates or whatever amount that holds back chaos. And that blew me away that there was, like, that level of detail. And, and, that. and so, and then Naboo is just one of those planets where a lot of other Star Wars planets don't really get culture. You know, Jeddah has culture in it. Um, right. Naboo. But really everything else is, is like, oh, it's, well, this Hoth is an ice planet and Endor is a, a forest planet, you know, and there's some Ewoks there. And we, I guess we got some Ewok, like, world building afterwards. But, like, um, Naboo just kind of builds on itself. And so the idea of the, the handmaidens, I just thought was super interesting in terms of, like, these decoy bodyguards that are like a you know like basically like sisters in arms yeah you know, protecting each other and stuff so um, i wanted to do one that was a little bit like i wanted to create my own and i wanted to do something a little bit more like um she's a little bit more brash you know, so yeah. she's jumping off roofs and chasing down people and stuff like that. Initially, I wanted to do a whole thing where she she gets framed for the murder Ooh. of the, the queen uh, by Panaka. But it was just, you know, that's so much to put in, you know, six. I think that one's like eight pages or something. So six to eight pages. is it's it, you, I really didn't have enough time. So we just still it down. Um, it was fun making good old Quarsh. Good old Quarsh yeah. Panaka, the bad guy. and. Which um, makes sense. Just saying, yeah. you were on to something. Well, he was a bad guy. I think my brain was going because he was a, a bad guy in the in Legends, too. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that they kept that through line in uh, Princess uh, Princess Leia of Alderaan. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's It also is kind of sad when you watch episode one. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and, and now we're in Shadow and realizing like how... Like, even though there was obvious differences, how much Padme still cared for and respected Panaka, you know? Yep, it's true. It's, a, it's like, I remember as a kid, I'm like, oh, this guy's kind of cool. You know, he's got the Queen's uh, safety all the time. You know, the Hudson Gangsters, we can't take our Royal Highness there. You're like, all right, this guy actually cares. But then you're like, oh, he was secretly a dick. You're like, oh, all right. Single tear for Korsh. Yeah, yeah, just one. Just one. Just, just you one know, one. it doesn't even have to be real. <laughs> <You know? laughs> some sort of uh, ocular moisture which is the first time I've ever said those words together. ocular moisture look at that we found the magic here <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and after that you uh, you have the Carillion run mm -hmm. which any Han Solo and Chewie hijinks I'm here for I don't even yeah. care they, them running to the store I'm like okay sure Oh, you know, one hundred percent, because it's gonna go south some way. Somebody's dropping mm -hmm. eggs on the wrong foot, uh, and it's just gonna go south. And <laughs> we get to see we get to see Garm, which is cool. Mm -hmm. and, Garm back. Yeah, he, I like his design a lot. He just like yeah. old like. He's kind of got like a Sam Elliott vibe to him. He him. does. Yeah, he's like a long-haired Sam Elliott, like space cowboy kind of. You know, I just like well, it. And, and that's what, like, we, we wrote and we were making that before Solo came out, so we really didn't have an idea of what Corellia was going to look like in that movie, so we just kind of combined, like, four different versions of Corellia that were, had existed before yep. um, to, to kind of give us the, the landscape. Um, but, you know, Han's one of those characters who's extremely important and I find to be a very uh, complex character. Agreed. Even though it's pretty easy to make fun of, like, um, it's it's easy to lose that, I think, and, and like, his sort of overratedness uh, or seeming overratedness in pop culture and kind of, like, how he's sort of billed as, um, like, the, the guy who says, I know. Yeah, you know? <laughs> true. And, um, but it was, it was a chance to tell a story about kind of what I think is his complexity and, and, and the, the very real thing, I think, um, his character kind of goes through through the entire original trilogy and I guess now carries on to the sequel trilogy where he's running from from who he really is almost the entire time Yeah, and it's, it's Luke and Leia who kind of save him from himself although he'd never admit it of course, of course, I mean he's a scoundrel, you know mm -hmm. I dig it. oh he's still a scoundrel but he's a 
He's a little tender heart scoundrel. Exactly. He's he's admitted to maybe having a heartbeat, um, <laughs> <laughs> occasionally. That's why it's a it's a great moment in Solo when he's like, "I'm a terrible person." They're like, "Dude, <laughs> I mean, whatever you got to tell yourself at the end of the day." Yeah, I mean, and that's one thing. Um, I know Solo um, kind of ruffles some feathers um, among people, and I totally understand why. But I do think Han's characterization in the movie is a lot of fun, and Alden does such a great job at portraying that sort of like naivete that that eventually gives way to this like that guarded cynicism we see in in A New Hope. I agree, I agree, and then adding. Uh... Adding more depth to the canon, you've got the Mandalorian, and mm-hmm. I thoroughly appreciate this episode. Uh, episode. I'm gonna keep saying episodes because that's, that's where I'm at now. Whatever I appreciate call it, man. this here episode that you this guys. This thing episode. Yeah, you know how it is. We talk in episodes here, um, and you've got Satine, which is already a really mm-hmm. cool idea. Like, where do you? So, how do you pick characters? Is it just like a random thing of like, oh, this is. This would be cool to go into. Uh, it just, it, I, you know, I, I wish there strikes. was like, yeah, it's just one of those things like th- her character always seems super interesting to me because, you know, in, in the EU, like the Mandalorians were billed as, you know, the, the, the ridiculousness of the Mandalorians went pretty far oh, yeah. in terms of like how, the, how macho Spartan, like crazy warrior cult they were. And then, oh, and, yes. then it, and then Clone Wars comes out and you get the new Mandalorians and you get Sistine Chris and it's what? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I mean, I remember watching it and at first being like, what the hell is going on? Yep. You know, cause I'm used to like Beskar, fighting, you know, Mandalorians yeah. that are, like, super jacked and they can do whatever they need to do, you know, like, sort of Invading ridiculousness. Invading for fun. Yeah. Yep. And then we get Satine Chris, and um, it's so, so interesting because they didn't lose any of that stuff, you know. You get, you still have Death Watch, and you get Bo-Katan, who is also, like, just such a fascinating character. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, but I just thought it would be interesting to do a story about this person who's a pacifist. I thought like she kind of wasn't, you know, right. like, she was absolutely trained in like that classic Mandalorian style. Um, and she was strong enough to walk away from that when she realized like, that's not who she wanted to be. Sure. You know, and, and um, I just thought that was super interesting. And I also wanted to do like, like kind of explain, you know, without, I wanted to explain Bo's and Satine's relationship going into Clone Wars. Like, yeah. Satine sort of being this, like, the, the kind of, like, the golden child that walked away, and Bo is kind of, in my head, was fighting for that attention. Like, like sure. she kept she kept up that, that warrior mentality to, to impress, you know, the, the family. Sure. And uh, I like that a lot because it's like Satine, even though she is like the going against the grain pacifist Mandalorian, which up until now was an oxymoron, mm-hmm. uh, she still can dole it out if she needs to. Right. And that's and that's what I kind of like, too, is like to me, even though it obviously not canon, like if you it's sup- it's more interesting that if you, if this was true of her character. Agreed. It was the accepted fact. Like, it's interesting that she still refuses to. You know she can. She, you know she can beat the living fuck out of you. Yeah. But she she doesn't. Makes so. it better. Makes it even mm-hmm. better. That's the best part about the Jedi. <laughs> it's like there are these extremely powerful beings, but like you wouldn't know that because they're just yeah. You're like, not supposed to. Right. I love it. I love it. And then you have the Aces, which is mm-hmm. a really cool idea. Mm-hmm. That you would have like one equal equal sides, equal people, and then the different reactions as well to when they get back. It's like a Lost Stars kind of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wanted to give Alex something. I had written, I've written another X Wing based comic a while back, and it just wasn't wasn't working. Even though I'm sad that I never got to revisit it because I. Um, but uh, I wanted to give Alex. He loves. X wings and the fighter pilots and stuff. So I wanted to make sure I, I gave him something like that. And the dichotomy 
in the juxtaposition of someone who is pretty much at Poe's skill level within the First nice. Order, like going head to head and sort of shaking Poe's kind of faith in, in himself, which we, you know, we don't really, we don't at least see in the movies. Right. Like I, I thought that would be interesting to do. Um, and designing like the Baroness was a lot of fun, which we called her like behind, like the, we almost called the issue the Baroness, but I didn't really know how to explain like her getting that nickname. Like, sure. you know, obviously a play on like the Red Baron yeah. or Baron <laughs> or Baron Feltor or not Feltor. Um, who am I thinking of? Sutrafell. Yes. You know, he's a, the yeah. Baron Sutrafell. So I wanted to play on that, like, like, uh, that sort of legends y idea and give him give him a counterpoint. Um, so yeah. cool and then it's just and then it just turned out to be a gorgeous, like gorgeously uh done comic. It did. He's so good at it. And I like yeah. this was another one I really like the placement and how they're like looking at each other and kind of mirroring one another even in the panels. Mm -hmm. Oh really, yeah. Really cool touch. And and again we talked about that, you know, and, and it, we there in comics, you kind of want that symmetry. You want there to be a rhythm to the panels because um, it makes the pages flow a lot easier. And when you have that symmetry, especially if you're you literally are juxtaposing these two two characters, you know. Sure. So, um, but yeah, he he really laid it out beautifully. So. And when you were doing comics, did you like research how this stuff is made, or are these like placements and stuff like that? Is that stuff you just picked up by doing? Uh, it's mostly like just, you know, years of being exposed to reading comics and, and writing them poorly for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I write them great now, um, but, okay, I will, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's trial and error and, and looking, I mean, I've, I've definitely looked at comic scripts. I remember forever ago, the first time I ever decided I want to write a comic was like in high school. And I, uh, I think Dark Horse who publishes Hellboy and, um, those type like those types of characters, mm -hmm. they had like a, like a submission thing and they, they showed you how to outline your script. And so that's how oh. I've always pretty much written it since then. So I looked at that and then just got feedback from, people and editors telling me like hey that's this is dumb don't do it this way do it this way and, sure sure you know that's pretty cool yeah and it worked out and now are you ready jim i'm ready we've been leading up to this, this <laughs> episode mm -hmm. uh, i'm sticking with the episode you can, um, you run wild you be free summer child <laughs> yeah this is uh this one you made for me i don't know if you meant to I feel like you did. Um, you just <laughs> I feel like you opened Twitter and just were bombarded with me um, just speaking into existence this comic, uh, The Apprentice. Your, your adorable love for Clark <laughs> absolutely had no influence on this comic, but I will let you. I will absolutely. Like once, once, once I knew Are you going to let me take it, credit with this? <laughs> I, once I knew that you loved it, I thought about dedicating it to you just to make you happy. <laughs> I'll take anything I can get. Because I think, because the first time I think I listened to you on Claire Stribling's. Oh, yeah. Data bank discussion. Yeah. And that's, that's how I think I, I was like, oh, this guy's really fun and nice. So, um, <laughs> you boob. <laughs> I'm such a boob. I'm such a boob. Yeah. But, um, so yeah. But we, Mark, I think his name, last name's Eldridge. Mm -hmm. He's like, he writes for 1138, but he kept saying he really wanted to see something with like the Jedi on Jedi or like specifically Qui-Gon on Jedi. Yeah. And like, I, I DM'd him because my mind immediately like, like snapped into place. And I was like, Hey, you know, I know you're hoping for a canon story, but do you mind if I just steal this little kernel and turn it into you know, and he was like, sure. So again, that's thank where you, Mark. Came. <laughs> yeah. No, see, I mean, him just saying like, I want it, I want to see a Qui-Gon and young cheered and, and cheered sort on Jeddah was like something that speaks to 
almost all of my Star Wars interests, like outside of like smugglers and underworld stuff like that. That's really like the Jedi and the spiritual side and, and Rogue One. And I love Jedi. God, I love Jedi. It's such a great setting. So, um, yeah, man. I agree. So, and, then it be, and then it started and then it became one of the hardest scripts I ever had to write. Really? How come? Uh, it just wasn't, again, it was almost like a space thing. And you have to remind yourself, too. Like, I was writing, when I first wrote it, Sheridan and Bays talked a lot like they were adults. And you have to remind yourself, uh, like, we all forget uh, that, like, kids talk a certain way. True. So I had to rework dialogue a lot to try and make it sound less like Chirrut from Rogue One was talking and more like, you know, a younger Chirrut. You know, um, who's not like the super articulate, you know, monk uh, that's very wise. He's still just a kid. And his his wisdom sort of comes from the happenstance of like being a child. Right. Things a little bit more clearly than someone who maybe overthinks things like a lot of us do as adults. Um, Sure. So I like the simplicity of of the lesson at the end that was, but it took a while. It took a really, really long time to get to that point in the script, which sounds silly. These little six page, eight page thing, but you know, I mean, you packed it somehow. It's it. I mean, it, obviously it's from my dreams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's what's really funny about this is like, uh, so I don't know if I'm just putting out the pheromones correctly um, or whatever, but Jody Hauser did the uh, Age of Republic Qui Gon issue. Yes, and yeah, obviously fantastic. you probably heard me screaming uh, mm-hmm. from outside mm-hmm. your window. Yep. And the planet that you he's on. Up, by the way, I was really fucking pissed. I, I mean, was, hey, just... I don't make the rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a fellow uh, uh, volume enthusiast, uh, I feel like you understand. But um, when you get an issue like that, you have to get on your rooftop and just kind of. Like, do you remember Amanda Bynes when she did that, like, that's me, uh, dear Amanda's? Um, it's yes. that. You you know, it's like you have to get on the rooftops and yell your messages. Um, this is one of those times. And when that that issue came out, it was a Qui-Gon issue, so I was already, like, freaking out. Right. Um, but then the plan that he's on in the first opening panel is B-R-I apostrophe N. Yes. And I was like, <gasps> It's, it's, you know <laughs> it's, it's that beautiful symmetry yeah. in life it, they knew like you put out so much positive Qui-Gon energy at this point that's what I'm saying um, yeah 100 so, percent so that's sorry. absolutely named after you yeah so I'm I'm sorry uh you and Mark were both affected uh but I'm taking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking credit for it and uh dude this and I and then you wrote the uh that blog post like story Mm-hmm. Um, as well, and I gotta tell you, I mean, I did tell you, I sent you a message afterwards, and I was like, dude, this is just, thank you, because having a niche favorite character to the depths of love that I have for this one, and the same that you have for, like, Obi-Wan, uh, you mm-hmm. know, our dissertation uh, subjects, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's specifically Qui-Gon, is like, he was only in episode one. You know, so it's really yeah. it's really hard to find anything about him because he was in one movie and then a few episodes of the Clone Wars, and it's like any sort of morsel I can get, canon or otherwise, I'm like I will devour it like crazy because I'm like I- I'm not the only one that remembers him, you know, and to be affected by a character like that, I always talk about like me as a man now is 100 percent molded by like my dad, life experiences, and Qui Gon Jinn. Like there were, there were, I remember being like nine years old watching episode one and Qui-Gon being like, you know, your focus determines your reality. I was like, oh my God, he's right. You know, (laughs) just like moment of clarity. Is he talking to me? He was, fun fact. Um, And so I think about that a lot. And because of that, I don't mean to be, but I'm extremely critical about Qui-Gon stuff. Because I'm like, I've spent literally all of my brain space for the last 20 years thinking about this character because I want to be him in real life. <laughs> so, so so, I've got this like sense where I'm like, you know what? It just doesn't feel right. I don't know. Like the, the dialogue or something. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. Like I remember there's a figure uh, of like Qui-Gon and he's like, I don't know, one of those like 10 inch figures that came out and he's like yelling and he's got his lightsaber up and I was like, that's not Qui-Gon, who did that? No. Like, what is what is happening? Like a toy I'm getting mad at and I'm like, nah, they didn't get it. 
and reading your issue here and your story afterwards were so what I needed that I decided to have you on your show and make you talk to me for an hour and a half to get to this point. So thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. It was, it, you know, it's funny because Qui-Gon's a character that I, it's almost like certain characters impact you, I think, at different points in your life. Agreed. Like, I didn't have the appreciation for Han um, or Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon. Um, Han and Obi-Wan definitely sooner. Um, but Qui-Gon sort of came around, like, in the last few years. Um, just the appreciation for, especially after the Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, and, then, you know, I started to appreciate him before this, but that, uh, we're talking about certain point of view, the story that he's oh, featured in, and that which is just dude. golden, which is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, you know, gorgeously written story. Agreed. And, um, Claudia Gray, man. Oh yeah, she she's, gets it. She does, and so it, you know, he's to me. Um, I I think my thing with Qui Gon is that sometimes he gets portrayed like. Um, as like almost an opposition to the Jedi, but he, to me, he totally buys into the whole Jedi thing. He just also thinks you have to be aware of these other things. And he sort of sees like the hubris that's, that's sort of taking over. That's really the only thing. Like he probably agrees it with Yoda and Mace on a lot of the fundamentals, Yep. but um, he's willing to open his mind. Agreed. You know? Agreed. And that, that's, so, I always describe him as the Jedi that got right because he's still devout. Like, he's a Jedi. He's not, like, breaking the rules here and there for the sake of breaking the rules. Like, oh, I'm going to do my own thing. He's doing oh, it yeah. like, for the sake of the Force. And, like, when they're getting into their rules and so much so, like, dude, he's on Tatooine protecting a queen. He's got a lot on his mind, and he still recognizes the Chosen One when he sees him. And then is willing to stand by him in front of literally everyone. Like, Qui-Gon's my dude, man. Yeah, no, he's such an he's such a great character. Again, and it's funny because, like you said, he he barely has any screen time when you think about it. Like he's in most of Phantom Menace, but in the in the overall scheme of things, he's not. You know, it's true. But he his presence is absolutely felt in that. And, you know, and it's and it really cultivated like his like legacy since then, especially yeah. in the new canon. Yeah, I agree. Um, so thankful. And, and it, yeah, and that, and it's awesome. It's awesome to see that. So, um, but the idea of him sort of almost frustrated that he needs to he he has to take a Padawan, you know, because he 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 wants to be better. He wants to be it to a point where he knows um, he feels like he he knows everything. It's true, um, and he 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 feels comfortable and the whole idea of just like coming to terms with the fact that you're never really ready for anything. It's true. It's like, it? the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know anything. Yeah. And you know, and, I love it. And you're never really ready for anything. And a lot of the times that when that, that thing comes that you're not ready for is, is kind of what you needed. And I think that's probably true. And hopefully we'll see more of that in master, master and apprentice. I know. I know. Oh my God. Dude, see, that's another one. I have to apologize to Claudia. If I have her back on the show. <laughs> because she was she was another victim of uh of the signal I was sending out because I remember last year somebody like randomly on Twitter you know and they just ask questions and you're like hey here's what I would do um somebody was like what is your dream book like if somebody could write a book I was like I want an Obi Wan and Qui Gon book written by Claudia Gray three weeks later they announced it and I was like they heard me <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what I'm on I'm just just trying to get some help I guess. Um, whatever wavelength I'm on, if you have requests, um, I'll take them now and put them out. Oh, now so, I have to think. I'm just saying. I didn't that Bale and Mothma spot. show I really want. Okay, Bale and Mothma show. Got it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. We'll see what Thank I can you. do. Thank you. Yes, Thank you know, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the for the Qui Gon stuff you've been putting out. This is a, you know, a little little repayment, if you will. So, mm -hmm. This is now a service I provide. Now that I've spoken it out loud, um, <laughs> so you know it's uh, we're all in this together, and uh, man, I just I love this issue. I love it so much. And Chirrut's my favorite of Rogue One, and the idea that Qui Gon is 
so open. Like you just, God, you just added so much depth to it, and you this fits into like uh, the Jedi Apprentice series because mm-hmm. Qui Gon didn't want to take an apprentice then, and then here you have him to be like, oh, if I'm supposed to train someone, like I, I don't. Th- there's more I don't know about. So he goes on like a sabbatical, and then the fact that he is open enough to learn from a child, like it's just you understand the character and that I thoroughly appreciate. And then with Alex's style that he chose and just, man, it's so good. Yeah. It's no, it's, I mean, Alex did wonders on that issue. It's just it's so gorgeous. I love how he draws Qui-Gon because there's, you know, a lot of people when they do star Wars, there's this need to photo reference uh, you know, to the point of, like, just copying images from the movies. Um, but I think it's a lot of that character training with Alex is he can capture someone's major features really well and still make them, like, his own, you I know? Agree. He knows how to – It sounds it's a weird term, but he knows how to make his characters act, too, like their facial expressions and, and their body language and stuff. Um, You're so, right. And just the, the, those first panels, man, of like Qui Gon standing at the foot of the the Jedi yes, statue, and it's still like, standing. Oh. Yeah, and just having like seeing that, you know, writing that down and wanting like that was something. Most of what is like most of the imagery in The Apprentice is stuff that I really wanted to see. You know, like there's the um, there's the tree panel where where yes. Chirrut takes them, and that was from. Um, a sketch, I think, by like Michael Allstott from the Rogue One concept art, and I just love that image so much. I basically had to write a comic to to like make sure it got into a story in some way. Oh, and, that's cool. Um, but I just love that imagery, and then the Mortis altar, and like yes. Alex added the fountain to it, and just gave it like such a really cool like Middle Eastern quality. And um, I, yeah, I. It was, it's just such a, a gorgeous issue, and it's it's one of I think it's my favorite one visually that in terms of Alex's art, you know he's done he he's done so much good work, but his color and his line work on the those issues is just incredible. I agree, I agree, and I like when he when uh, Chirrut and Baze are like getting in trouble, and then uh, Qui Gon cuts the dude's blaster and then immediately puts the lightsaber away, and he's like, please, like come on, are we yeah. really, are we really doing this? Yeah, no, I and you said it earlier. Like, I wanted it to be. I didn't. I I wanted the idea of like the Jedi using violence as a last resort. So he's not. He's not. You know, he's not going to cut the guys. You know, in half or something unless he needs to. So, the idea of just like a quick panel where you understand exactly what he did without ever seeing it, I think, is way cooler than any sort of like he runs them through and chops the other guys down. You know. I agree. So. I agree, especially in Jedi. You know, it's a holy city. Come on, man. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm into it. And then your your annual was another one that like didn't have any dialogue, but was great and told so much story, just via the art and just wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Well done. Mm-hmm. Well done. Oh, God, this series is so good. And you, there's only one left. One left. <sighs> one one left. But I think it's the best. Yeah. And I hate saying that because it's my own thing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like but... that's how you should feel, though. Is that like the ne- it's like what's your favorite thing? Oh, the next one, right? You know, but so... it's it's really the whole series. I think summed up in in one comic, and Ooh. it's a little bit longer than usual because we wanted to make sure we went out, you know, on a high note, and it has all these concepts in it that I, you know, I've loved some unused George Lu- Lucas concepts that I love. And um, it spans, teams. spans everything. It, it touches on everything. And I, I really hope, uh, you know, I hope that comes across. I hope the love that, that went into that issue really comes across. Cause you know, it's, um, whether, whether people like it or not, it, I think Alex and I both already are really proud of, working on this one so sweet um, and that's coming out may 25th i think it should be out may 25th um alex has started work on it i don't know how far in he is but i've seen the first i've seen the first few pages and they were gorgeous so i'm very excited oh i can't wait yeah 
Me too. Dude. And Celebration is in like three weeks. I know. This is, it's insane, dude. It's going to be here. It's going to be so quick and it's going to be so fucking crazy. I know. It's gonna... Have you been to Chicago before? Yeah, I was there um, last year actually for C2E2. Yeah, how was it? It was pretty good. It's cold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Chicago's a fun city, man. Sweet. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed my week there because I like to explore. I like to make sure I sit like time away from the convention to like go and check stuff out and drink at any cool bars in the area. And... Same same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Drink some whiskey. Oh Do some whiskey yeah. Drinks. I'm with you there. I'm with mm-hmm. you there. Celebration's gonna be the best. Oh dude, we're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be nuts. I'm very excited. But uh, you know we've been talking for almost two hours. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. I hope to God your listeners stuck out through this whole thing. <laughs> just me like being like, yes, I, I wrote it. It was very good, and yeah. I enjoyed writing it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you it's just me it. being like, this is the best. <laughs> me just nodding like, thank you. I don't know how to take it, but thank you so much. This is very nice of you to say. That's that's the whole point of the show that I don't tell people beforehand. It's so I can trap you and then be like, this is what I like about something you did. Now take this. <laughs> You know, it's like no, it's a podcast. I for real, it's like a real show. Like it's I feel like people, I feel like people are gonna listen to this and they're gonna be like, they're just gonna hear like, like a screaming yeah. the entire time, <laughs> and then they'll hear me like nodding or like laughing That's or it. something in the background, and then just more screaming. Welcome, which to is the show. great. I mean, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, it's such a good time. But uh, dude, I hope you I hope you've had uh, at least a little bit of fun cuz I've yeah. had a lot of bit of fun. This yeah, this great. has been this has been the greatest night of my life. It's my <laughs> favorite night I've ever had. Oh, well, you know, I'm glad I could help. Thank um, you for providing this to me. Of course. I love you. I love you more, and I will keep then uh, the Bale and Mon Mothma uh, thing in mind. Please do. And, Please uh, do. I'm just saying when it happens, everyone to hear first. Mm-hmm, 100%. So, this just... is I will absolutely like subscribe to your like manifesting Star Wars projects energy. Yes. Uh, More Qui-Gon please. <laughs> but be, before I forget, uh where can people find you online? They can find me um if they want to follow a Star Wars comic that's at a Star Wars comic yes. on Twitter and then I am at Obes Kenobes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. a little obers canovers just a little bit you know his, his real name <laughs> find me at obes canobes it's such a good handle Thank man you. so yes check out a star wars comic it's amazing and uh until next time and Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites and at brianbalance.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. You asked, I answered. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic and get you some sweet gear. Also, I went and made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.